Thank you for joining me on this last segment on today's show, talking about the Baltimore Ravens and one of the leaders, one of the more veteran players, it's crazy to say, um, because of all the changes that they've gone through up until now in Marlon Humphrey. What is his future looking like with Baltimore? Because it was brought up um, through the articles that I was reading on how this could be a make it or break it year for Marlon Humphrey. Again, it sounds crazy um, because he has been a big piece for them and their defense, but with Marlon Humphrey, a little bit of a background check on him. Drafted in 2017 to the Ravens and had early success right off the bat in his first year. Through his third year was when he was named to the All-Pro team. So heading into his fourth year, he was coming off of that All-Pro season. And uh, during his rookie year, heading into that fourth year of that rookie deal, Baltimore decided to extend him to a massive five-year, $97.5 million extension. Um before that last year of his rookie deal so they've seen enough they saw how good he was at the start how consistent he was so they gave him that massive extension and now Humphrey is only 27 years old and I feel like he's been playing for forever honestly but he's since that point has been dealing with some more nagging injuries um, since then if you look at 2021 he only played 12 games then he was fully healthy in 2022 but then this past year he missed seven games and um To go along with that, the production really hasn't been there up until this point. Um, Based on that production, Humphrey has only recorded one interception in the last three, um, in only three of the last four years, excuse me. He's only recorded one interception and 12 pass deflections since 2022. He has three years left on his deal, but no guaranteed money after that. So after this year, no guaranteed money left on that deal. So the Ravens have a little bit more of an advantage there in terms of what they want to do with him, what decision that they do they want to come up with after this year based on how he plays and how uh, the production is and how healthy he is really because the Athletic wrote in one of their articles how Humphrey, um, how his cap hit this year, or actually, excuse me, in 2025, is going to be 25.13. That's in 2025. And then in the following year, it's going to be 22.93 in 2026. So, They believe that Humphrey also probably needs to have a healthy and a very convincing season this year to avoid um, next year the Ravens having really the power to decide if it's worth keeping him on, knowing that those cap hits are coming in the following year. Um, So he still has a great opportunity because not only um, is he getting at least another year, but at the same time, the Ravens are a good team. So it's not like... You're trying your best to produce out there with a team that's not um, so much of a dominant force. Their defense is very good, probably in the top five conversations. So he's going to have a great opportunity with a great pass rush to have these chances to record some more interceptions, have a low completion percentage against them. He has one more chance, it seems like, to do so before we head into 2025. And there's a lot more questions than answers around Marlon Humphrey. And also the health factor is huge. Um, playing as many games as he can this year is going to go a long way in convincing the team and the fans that he at least is out there. He is better serving them, obviously, with him on the field than hurt. So he has one more year to prove it. Um, But the questions are starting to pop up right now is the focus of this segment. And also you can look at the fact that the Ravens drafted uh, one of the best corners, in my opinion, in this year's draft in Nate Wiggins. Towards the end of the first draft, an absolute steal. Bringing him in could be looked at as a reinforcement for the Ravens, but also in case, you know, if Marlon Humphrey doesn't convince anybody, you have Nate Wiggins there to not have as much pressure on him this year. And if you decide to move on from Humphrey, you have Nate Wiggins there to slide in there and be more prepared in a way uh, to step into the limelight in his second year if they decide to move on from Marlon Humphrey. Um, So that's something to keep an eye on the guaranteed money and how that plays into the decision that the Ravens make and also um, if there is talks about maybe renegotiating, restructuring that contract if Marlon Humphrey feels that he has played well enough to approach the Ravens in that sort of capacity. And also to keep in mind an important date with Marlon Humphrey and how this could all play out and how we could receive any sort of clues or be swayed some way if... um, As to what could happen, in March of 2025, Humphrey's deal includes a $4 million roster bonus in March of 2025. So a decision most likely will come by then because 
if they're not convinced by Marlon Humphrey, they're not going to wait until after March to cut him or release him and give him that $4 million roster bonus. A decision will most likely come by then. And then at that point, if it comes that early in the process of the offseason, it could be a post-June 1st um, designated release by the Ravens. Like we've seen a lot this year. Um, by doing so, the Ravens would actually save $18 million in cap space by designating designating Humphrey as a post-June 1st release. So another thing that could benefit the Ravens, not to say that they should do it, but it is something that's enticing because of the fact of where Marlon Humphrey is right now. He has been there for a long time, so it is hard to part with someone that has contributed so much to this organization. But again, seeing how much it benefits the salary, seeing how much um, you're really getting out of Marlon Humphrey for paying him $19.5 million in salary just based on the general structure of the deal. He has no more guaranteed money after that, so that benefits the Ravens a little bit more. But um, it is something that they have to keep an eye on. And Humphrey has been one of the most, I think, um, one of the players that advertises the Ravens the most. He has a podcast, so he always talks about it on there and how um, solid the Ravens are. And he's one of the most prominent faces that once you think of the Ravens' defense, you think of Marlon Humphrey right away, Roquan Smith right away, those guys that have been there for a long time. And there's no way anyone's touching Roquan Smith ever. He's probably going to retire there as a Raven. But Marlon Humphrey has been there for a long time now. And to see the questions pop up, it would certainly be weird to not see him out there uh, being a Steelers fan and seeing him out there all the time in those games against the Ravens. It would surprise me if they decide to move on from him. Um... What do I make of his future right now? It's a little weird just because I do acknowledge the times that he isn't out there and how recently he has missed a lot of games. So that would be my biggest concern if I were a Ravens fan is how healthy he could be going forward because I think just based on ability and where he is at only 27 years old, I don't think he's done you know bad enough to convince you that he's not still a good player. To me, it's those injury concerns that keep popping up and that's not something that the Ravens really need to deal with right now because they are in their Super Bowl window. They are in the point in time where Lamar Jackson, MVP conversation year in and year out. They just brought in Derrick Henry. Um, Mark Andrews is healthy now. Isaiah Likely, you saw what he could do last year and how excited you can get from him. Zay Flowers as well. You have this point in time now where everything is falling into pieces and you don't need health injuries to sort of get you there, but then you just fall short because your best players aren't out there. That's my biggest concern. I don't know what they're going to do. Again, it just falls to whether he's healthy enough to be out there for a consistent amount of games. That's my biggest deciding point in all of this. So whether what happens or not, I won't be surprised. Or actually, I will be more surprised if they do move on from him. But um, I could see it either side, whether they decide to do that or not. But right now, it stands in a weird spot. More questions starting to be brought up. He can answer all of those with a solid 2024 season. But with that being the case, that'll wrap up today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. I want to thank you guys for tuning into the show and remind you to please like, follow, and subscribe to the show as well. On top of following the network on all forms of social media, on Facebook, Instagram, X, and on TikTok to find out more about this show and check out more of the content check out the gsmc podcast network channel and the gsmc sports network channel on youtube for a variety of different forms of nfl discussions and content that are both posted on those channels and as a final reminder tune in every weekday at 6 30 p.m eastern time for live episodes of the show talking more about the nfl and discussing more hot topics are in and around the league with me Mandy Maradiega as your host. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys back here with me again live on Monday. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? Nice. I don't wanna go to.